So Human Being and Human Becoming is an exhibition and programme at Galway Arts Centre as part of Babaro International Children's Festival October 2018. The artwork and exhibition was made by artist Siobhan McGibbon and third class children from Skull Cree Issa in Galway. Over nine sessions, as part of an artist's residency, Siobhan and the children created artwork in response to the scientific research that inspires Siobhan's own work. This strange and compelling research looks into the biology of other animals and its potential relevance for altering human biology. Together, Siobhan and the children have made their own science fiction based on science fact. Galway Arts Centre is working with Bobro International um, Arts Festival for Children. This year, um, we work with them a lot. Uh, we've worked on several different types of partnerships and exhibitions throughout the years. And for us, it's a really good way to involve a massive part of our audience, our youth audience, um, in something that's quite experimental, quite exciting. So this year we worked with Super Projects um, based in Dublin. The aim of Super Projects was to create work with children and for children. From Bob Rowe's point of view, they are a one-week festival, but the process for this exhibition started in the spring with Siobhan McGibbon going um, into Skull Cree Issa. And it was important for the values of Bob Rowe and for Galway Arts Centre to feed through into what became this project with Super Projects. I'm Siobhan McGibbon, I'm a visual artist and researcher based in Cork. At the beginning of the workshops I introduced the kids to this piece here, this is a xenothopian leg. Um, this piece is based on scientific research on the African clawed toad and it's a hybrid. I use my hybrid figures to embody my research and through these figures I think about future scenarios and this is what I wanted to do with the children. My own practice has benefited greatly from working with scientists and in workshop two we brought in a scientist from Curran, Dr Sarah Gundy, and we talked about regenerative medicine and stem cell applications and we thought about what it would be like to be a human newt hybrid that could lose its limb and simply grow it back and what the consequences would be if we weren't worried about injuries or death. In the workshops we discussed how medical science has changed the lives of humans today, how we're living much longer lives now than we were a hundred years ago, and we thought about how medical science will change humans of, in a hundred years time, and how the world must adapt for these humans. How will the world be different if we are part bunny, part walrus, part cat, part dog? And through these discussions we thought about larger questions of communication and how humans of today will relate to humans of tomorrow. My favourite part was when we casted the hands, but like Samuel said, it was really hard to pull them out and you had to keep your hand in the exact same place for five minutes, so that was kind of hard. When we were making into the pink sludge thing. Like we drew half human, half cat, half dogs, half, half animals. Meat. Yeah. You have to try so hard but so carefully to pull your hands out. My teacher over there put her, made one of those and we try, and we literally had to bring another teacher to pull it off. My favorite part was when we drew the um, jellyfish because the jellyfish was the easiest one. Like, we made them at school and I didn't expect for them to be in an art gallery and other people to see them, yeah. to come and see them. So, Ashton and I have been working with Siobhan here at Galway Arts Centre for the last two days with workshops with second class and fifth class pupils. So we'd like to tell you a little bit about our way of thinking and our process. Um, it started a few years ago. Uh, I'm a philosopher um, and I'm an educationist. And I was interested in how we work with philosophy with children and we begin to move away from a lot of discussion and dialogue and discourse to thinking about how do we express our ideas differently as well. So using line, using image, um, using performance, using instruction pieces and so on. So Katie and I started thinking about how we bring together philosophy and art. And one of the other aspects um, of our project that we're really interested in is finding ways to think philosophically and aesthetically, 
by engaging with contemporary art practice and working with contemporary art practitioners. Yeah, and I suppose we're really interested in engaging with children and young people around the ideas that are presented through exhibitions, through different artist practice, and how we can unpack and unpick that through kind of different methodologies. And we're really conscious of the fact that often, you know, children aren't necessarily given a voice or often their capacity is kind of undervalued or um, not considered to be able to kind of deal or engage with quite complex issues and themes. And so we think about the ways that we can deal with those different issues and themes by bringing in different rhythms and different kind of um, patterns to the workshops, by looking at ways of talking, ways of writing, ways of making, ways of performing or using the body, and how through those methods different children get to engage at different times. And so over the course of a workshop or a series of workshops, each child has a voice. And um, what we think about as well, and for me this is a bigger question around education, educational experience, is the ways in which we have different kind of qualities of experience over the course of these workshops, that there are different rhythms to the experience. So we can see it sometimes it's very contemplative, it's very, very quiet, it's very reflective. Sometimes it's very, very energetic. Sometimes it's very discursive and philosophical. Um, Sometimes there's lots of movement as well. So it's about finding ways to think about what educational and aesthetic experiences are beyond thinking about them just discreetly. So we try and bring things together and move from one experience into another. So you can see that we might do a lot of inquiry and then pull back and do something that's a little bit more silent. So it was great to engage with Siobhan's exhibition with the children of Skull Cree here at Galway Art Centre because I mean, the themes and the ideas that they worked with over the eight, nine weeks that they were in the classroom and then brought into the gallery here are really, really rich and a really kind of rich bed for, for material to think about. So we worked with Siobhan to kind of develop different ideas, pull out the different themes, think about the different science facts, science fiction, and try and weave that through these different methods over the two days to give the students a really chance to kind of dive deep into those different, different ideas. And we also had pupils from, from the class, from School Pre, come and work with us. And it was lovely to have their voice in the, in the conversation so that we aren't talking about what they were doing, they're talking about it. And the other students can see that and see the value that's placed in that. Um, it's hard to be a child in a classroom when you're sitting at a desk a lot of the time. So we're interested in finding ways of, even very simple ways of connecting with the body. To move away from just talking about these things in an information way, to moving into the sort of life or story or autobiography of something. And that connection with feelings and emotions, it's quite experimental, it's usually quite silly. But it also allows them to experience their bodies in different ways and begin to have a sort of wider perspective that connects with lots of different creatures, um, animate, um, lots of different inanimate things that might have organic origins. So we're quite interested in that sort of expansion of the embodied imagination and sensibility and the different sorts of movements that allow us to connect in with the different rhythms and temporalities of nature. So it was a great project because we had the chance to work with someone new. It's always a great opportunity to have a visitor come in. And the fact that it was a scientist and an artist just really inspired them all. So um, the class in, in particular as well are very, very interested in video games and cartoons and characters and movies. So a lot of the project being based around um, designing their own animals and designing their own characters just totally hit the nail on the head. They were, they were hooked from day one. Um, and then introducing the DNA cell regeneration stem cells and the science side of things um, was a whole new perspective for them. Something that you know, art is usually kind of come from a different angle, I suppose, from before. So um, they just loved it. And then, um, as you said, having a project that built on week on week, there's so many different stages and elements to it that um, they kind of got to see the full perspective that art is ongoing, it's never finished, and it's not just a one day thing. So coming here today and getting to see the finished project, all their pieces put together, um, very proud and you can see they're all excited to, to see what the finished project is like. Um, as teachers we try our best to come up with interesting art lessons and we, we do what we can and we follow the curriculum, um, but having someone who's specialised in it, even kids alone, to meet an artist and uh, they feel that they are artists 
and it was just an unbelievable, like, unbelievable opportunity. Um, from start to finish, it was amazing with the kids, totally understood them and was able to inspire them the whole way along. Um, all the kids were, felt like they were successful in what they did and they're all involved, they're all interested and they all just came out very proud at the end with a finished project. So um, yeah, it was something, a great chance for them all to have.